Evening, everybody. Can you hear me all right with this, the way it is? Perfect. Wow. We're going to be in Genesis 22 tonight, as Mr. Subject read so well for us. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Tim, for leading us in songs. I, uh, I've said it before, but if, I guess if you're nervous getting up to preach, having really good hymns sung right before is, uh, is great, because my hope is in the Lord. <laughs> you know, that's, that is the truth. That is the truth. So, um, let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for tonight, and thank you for these people, and thank you for your word. And Lord, I ask that you please help us all understand something from it, something more about you, and some truth that we can live to please you. And I uh, hope uh, we can understand this life better. Father, in Jesus' name, amen. All righty. Well, has anyone ever had a donut? <laughs> yeah? All right. So the idea of a donut is that, <clears throat> you know, it's, well, there's many different shapes and sizes, frankly, but usually it's a sweet pastry and then there's a bit of a glazing on it, right? Often. Well, when we come to Genesis 22, the, the story is about God asking Abraham to sacrifice his son, and, and then Abraham being about to do it, an angel stopping him and saying, you've done enough and gone far enough. I know that you truly fear me. Um, Abraham stops and turns around, there's a, there's a ram. And so he sacrifices that ram as a substitute for his son. That's basically what Genesis 22 is about. And there's a lot of very great typology is a word they like to use that means an old testament something that happens in the old testament that foreshadows what's in the new testament and in this chapter layered all over it is so many instances it's amazing where there's parallels between how isaac behaves and how christ behaves and how god the relationship between god and isaac and god um pardon me abraham and isaac and God and Jesus. And that, it, usually when we come to this chapter, like when I first started reading it in preparation, that's all I could think about. Because that's usually what we talk about. And if you remember a donut, it's almost like the glaze that's on the outside of the donut. Okay? And what I would like to tackle tonight is the donut itself. Because God didn't tell Abraham, all right, Abraham, we're going to go do a skit that all of history will know, have some preview of Calvary. God had his own purposes with Abraham. And as Abraham was faithful in obeying God, something amazing happened. We have these, this the prophecy about Christ and, and all these things. But God had his own purposes to work out with Abraham. So that's what we want to look at tonight. Genesis 22. It is... A focus on God's working with Abraham. Um, so let's begin in verse 1 at the beginning. In chapter 22, verse 1, it says, After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. And that's verse 1. So it begins with saying, After these things, which is to say, you need to know that what follows is being built upon what happened before. So these events that we're going to talk about only happen because of what happened before. What happened before? Well, Abraham was called out of his father's house to go live by faith and live with... Um, God promised him uh, land and a seed and a blessing. And Abraham has lived by faith for a very long time. And he was promised that blessing of a son, okay? And he really, really wanted this son. And he wanted the son so badly, and God hadn't given it to him for a very, very long time. We're talking, he's in his 90s by the time he gets the son, okay? So he and his wife are well past the age of childbearing. And I believe... God has waited all this time so that it would be abundantly clear 
when Abraham finally gets the son that he's been longing for and hoping for and waiting for, that it wasn't of his own doing. His the New Testament in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 12, says his body was as good as dead. <laughs> like, it was an old man, and at 100 years old, he was not ready, physically speaking, in any medical sense, to be a father. And neither was his wife. Okay? At this point, his body was as good as dead. But, so when he receives a child, that's God's gift to him. Okay? That's God's gift to him. And, and that's what immediately precedes this chapter. Chapter 21 is God giving Abraham his son. Also, God gives him peace with the, the major power in the area, Abimelech. Abraham had been frightened of Abimelech before, and now God gave him peace. So, Abraham is enormously wealthy, and now he finally has the son he's been waiting for for so long, and he has peace. I think it's safe to say he's very happy. Very, very, very happy. Very, very thankful. So, that's, the, that's where we begin chapter 22. After these things, God, uh, we, what we learn is that God is a giver. He, he, we all depend on him, and God is a giver, and he gave Abraham a gift. That is, he gave Abraham his son. It says in verse 1, After these things, God tested Abraham. Now, in some translations, it says tempt, and that's, it's an unfortunate translation because tempt would seem to be that God is leading Abraham to sin. And the New Testament is very clear in James chapter 1, verse 13, that no man can say he is tempted of God because God cannot be tempted and he does not tempt anyone. God has no desire for anyone to stumble. He has no desire for anyone to sin. So, tested is what another word they often use. And it's, it's fair to say that what's going to follow is much like a test. Not the test that humans give each other to find out what we don't know. But it's a test to find out what he does know. What is what is what is what does Abraham know? And there is there is a translation um, that I found, and it says uses the word prove, and I think that captures even some of God's intent going forward. Is that his desire was to prove because he knows what's going to happen, and he knows Abraham's heart. He wanted the, what's going to occur. The test will prove to Abraham, to God, to the whole world. What is inside of Abraham? Okay. It will prove um, his fear of God. It will prove his love of God and his faith. So this is God is the tester. And he intended for Abraham to succeed. I, believe, I do believe that. So God is the giver and he gave Abraham a gift. God is a tester and he intended for Abraham to succeed. I believe that because, like we said... God does not desire for anyone to sin. It's absolutely not. Sin is, is a tragedy and it's, it's no good. He's, God has very strong language for it. Um, it's not at all allowed. And also in, in 1 Corinthians, Paul says he doesn't allow us to be tempted beyond that which we are able. So he is not putting something in our path that we can't choose to do right by. Uh, especially for Christians. So, we know God fully intends for Abraham to succeed in this challenge that he's going to give him. God gave him a challenge and he intended him to succeed. And it's, it's comforting to know that, especially that God is wise and he is sovereign. And it says, we're, we're memorizing in our kids' class in the Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and, and he will make straight your paths, is the summarized version. Um, the idea of making straight your paths and preparing your paths, God goes before us, and he prepares the path that we walk on, which means everything that we find in our path, he's okayed. 
and he has approved and he understands and he says, my child is up to this. Okay? So we don't accomplish, we don't come up to anything when we're walking in the will of God that we can't make the right choice in. God says he'll give us wisdom if we ask in James. So God intended for him to succeed. And he also, I believe, equipped Abraham for the success in this test. He equipped him by previously demonstrating his power to him. Remember when Abraham's body was as good as dead, but he still was given a son? There's, there's resurrection power in God to bring life from the dead. When he brought a son out of two people that were not able to have kids. So God equipped Abraham for this test by show, previously showing him his power. He also equipped him by having his promises. God had promised a son, and he had promised that this son of Abraham would become a great nation. God had fulfilled that promise, but the son hadn't become a nation yet. So Abraham had two things to hang on to in this challenge that God gave him to succeed. That the great power of God and God's promises. So, what is actually the test? Well, well, in verse 2, let's read there. God said, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So, the test is that Abraham needs to take Isaac his gift. So Abraham needs to take Isaac and go sacrifice him on a mountain. And what, remember what Isaac was to Abraham. Isaac was a gift to Abraham. So God is saying, Abraham, I gave you Isaac, and I am asking you to give him back to me. Okay? So what does Abraham do? Well, the next morning, immediately and completely, he obeys God. He, he takes his two young men, and he gets his donkey and his son, and they cut wood, and they take a three-day hike, and they leave the two young men at the end bottom of the mountain and they load the wood on Isaac and they climb the mountain and just as Abraham has, has prepared the altar and just as Abraham is about to slay his son an angel stops him in verse 12 and he says do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him for now I know that you fear God seeing you have not withheld your son your only son from me. So, we know that God is the Lord and he wants Abraham to fear him. So what was the purpose of the test? The purpose of the test was to show the measure of Abraham's fear of God. So, the angel saying, that Abraham's fear of God was indicated and measured by his obedience to God and, and specifically Abraham's trusting God with the things that were most precious to him. So, yes. So, to recap, God is the giver and he gave Abraham a gift. And we also know that God is a tester. And he intended for Abraham to succeed. Now, God is also the Lord. And he wanted Abraham to fear him. So, why did God test Abraham in the first place? It's so that the world would know. And God would see 
And Abraham would rem remember that God has the first place in Abraham's life. And that Abraham would be conscious of that. Often we'd say that, that God's will is for his glory and for our good. And in this test, God is glorified when Abraham obeys God, even though it means potentially giving up what's most precious to him. He says, God, I don't understand, but your way is best. And so he's willing to give Isaac back to him. And we're so grateful that the angel stops Abraham and that the Isaac does not have to die and that God provided a substitute ram. But we do know that Abraham was willing to go the whole way. There's no doubt about it. And an application is that God want, we can recognize that God gives us gifts. And much like Isaac, so Isaac was born to Abraham, not of his own doing. It was a gift of God. And so much of our life is, is grace. It's God's giving us him. And it's interesting that it wasn't Abraham's fault that it was of no consequence. It, this was a good thing. This exercise was a good thing, and it wasn't a penalty or a punishment for, for messing up. God didn't ask for Isaac back because Abraham messed up. It wasn't his own fault. It, there was no wrongdoing on his part. Um, actually, there's a lot of similarities between Abraham and Job, and that Abraham doesn't say it, but by his actions, he says much the same as Job did, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So God is a giver and he gives good gifts to us. And also, God allows challenges in our life for our faith to be demonstrated. And God allows challenges in our life for our faith to be demonstrated. And finally, God wants first place in our lives. And we should be very careful that we never, ever, ever let a gift come between us and the giver. And that's not to suggest that Abraham had some sort of inappropriate obsession with his son. Like, there's no, there's no wrong, nothing wrong is ever said about Abraham in this chapter. But it is true that what we love can have such an influence us, influence on us, that it becomes like a Lord. And something that we are so dearly attached to in this world can speak to us and influence us louder than God can speak to us. And that's where it's so powerful that Abraham was willing to give up what he loved so dearly to listen to his Lord. It was clear there was one Lord in Abraham's life. And, and it's interesting in today that when God gives us good gifts, just to always be mindful that it's a good thing he's given us, but it's not our Lord. Um, and so we can just keep that in mind. So we can thank God for the gifts he's given us. And we can recognize that God allows challenges for our faith to be demonstrated. And we can remember that God wants first place in our life. And not to let the gifts he's given us come between us and the giver. So let me pray for you. Father, thank you for tonight. And thank you for your word. And I just pray that you'd help us remember one good thing about it. And thank you that you're a Lord that can be trusted. And I thank you for just your amazing power at work. And, and in your word, Lord, they're so, so deep and so rich and we could spend so long on it. But I just pray that you know, help us all remember one thing about um, 
uh, the good gifts that you give us and that we can recognize there are challenges in our life that, that cause us to uh, our faith to be demonstrated, and that's a good thing. And I pray that you would help us to trust you as Lord of our life, and we can learn to trust you and be comforted in that. In Jesus' name, amen.